the deadline for the government to hand over Boris Johnson's unredacted pandemic WhatsApp messages and diaries has been delayed by the COVID inquiry. Uh, The deadline extension was granted when the government told the inquiry they didn't have access to everything the COVID inquiry wants. Now, here's the thing. It's also previously said that it's for them, the government, to decide what is relevant and what to hand over. Baroness Hallett, chair of the COVID inquiry, isn't having any of it. She's a formidable character, if you haven't come across her. She says she is quite capable of deciding what is relevant to her public inquiry. Meanwhile, the plot thickens. Of course it does. Boris Johnson is involved. The government now says it does not have all of Boris Johnson's diaries and WhatsApp messages and therefore can't hand them all over. Boris Johnson, meanwhile, claims the government hasn't asked for them in writing. It's like that game of pass the parcel, isn't it? But imagine the parcel is on fire. (laughs) Everyone's kind of throwing it to each other. Anyway, Sky News caught up with our former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, uh, who reiterated his claim that the requests for his diaries and messages are unnecessary. And he's the victim of a stitch up. This whole thing is a load of nonsense uh, from beginning to end. And uh, we've made that clear in the the statements that I've issued. Um, I think that it's ridiculous that elements in my diary should be cherry-picked and handed over to uh, the police, uh, to the Privileges Committee, uh, without even anybody having the, the basic common sense to ask me what these entries referred to. What do they refer to? There there is absolutely nothing in those entries that constitutes uh, rule-breaking during COVID restrictions, Okay, Mingling with friends at checkers. No, that that is absolutely not what those diary entries show. That is not what those diary entries show. And the whole thing is totally nonsensical. Who is trying to stitch you up, Mr Johnson? Who, well, who do you think is trying to stitch you up? Who do you think is trying to stitch you up? Richie Sunak? It's any... Yeah, I'm trying just to... Let's, let's go to... Let's go. Who is trying to stitch you up, sir? Is it Richie Sunak? Look, I think it's... It's Where are you? Come on, where are you? Yeah. I've asked you. It's okay. It's okay. He's from Sky News. He's from Sky News. He's being, he's entitled to, to ask me questions, and, he, and, I, and I'm going to tell you. I, th- I just think it's totally nonsensical, and um, bizarre that uh, you know, there are tens of thousands of entries in the the Prime Minister's diary. I've never seen these things before because I haven't looked through it. Um, None of them constitute a breach of the rules during uh, during COVID. During the, they weren't during lockdown; they were during other periods of the of the restrictions. None of them constitute a breach of the rules. None of them involve uh, socialising. It is total nonsense, and um, I find it extraordinary, absolutely extraordinary, that these things are handed over by I don't know quite what authority, the the cabinet office or whoever to the Privileges Committee and uh, to the police without any attempt to establish what these things actually mean or what they refer to, uh, with me. And I can assure you that, I can assure the public that they're all completely innocent and within the rules. And, you know, you talk about a stitch-up, you talk you, about you've spoken about you stitch talk, up. You, do, you, just, you, you, you said you're being no, stitched. You, you, you said originally you were being stitched you up by up. whom? Richie Sunak? No, no. I mean, let's talk of, let's somebody's talk, ta- somebody. Well, yeah, let's talk of a skip for fire. For reasons, for reasons that um, somebody somewhere thinks it's sensible to do this, I don't. Do you know what? There is just so much to unpack, isn't there? <laughs> In that little bit of audio. Sadly, we haven't got 17 days to do that. So <laughs> let's just crack on. That is Boris Johnson saying myriad things, but not actually answering any questions. But essentially arguing he doesn't need to hand over all of his WhatsApp messages because essentially it's a witch hunt, people want to stitch him up, and he absolutely has not broken the rules. Well, the last time he said that, may I remind you, he was fined for breaking lockdown rules after being ambushed by cake. Rishi Sunak, of course, Prime Minister, has also been speaking about this very subject. Uh, He again 
taking quite a strange position in my view, which is that it's for the government to decide, not a public inquiry, which, might I add, is a public inquiry which has been set up on your behalf. That's why it's called public. Anyway, this is what Rishi Sunak had to say. Well, I think it's really important that we learn the lessons of COVID, and that's why the inquiry was established. And we want to make sure that whatever lessons there are to be learned are learned, and we do that in a spirit of transparency and, and candour. Uh, the government has cooperated with the inquiry. Tens of thousands of documents have been handed over. And with regard to the specific question at the moment, the government's carefully considering its position, but it's confident in the approach that it's taken. Are you prepared to get into a legal battle with a public inquiry? Some senior legal figures think you'll lose that fight. Again, not going to comment on the speculation, but we are carefully considering next steps and the government is confident in its position. Are you saying that it should be up to ministers to decide what documents are looked at by the inquiry, not the independent judge in charge of it? Uh, again, government's handed over tens and tens of thousands of documents in a spirit of candour and transparency because it is important that we learn the lessons of COVID. With regard to the particular question at the moment, we're carefully considering next steps, but the government is confident in its position. So you might not hand over that material that they're asking for then? Uh, again, as I said, government is considering next steps carefully, uh, but has been confident in its position and has handed over tens of thousands of documents Not all today. the documents that they've asked for. Tens of thousands of documents today in a spirit of candour and transparency because it's important that we learn the lessons from COVID and again, carefully considering next steps. What is he on? What is he on? The longer I listen to this stuff, the more infuriated I get. As a reporter of many years, I've covered a range of public inquiries, including... Grenfell, the Bahamusa Public Inquiry, uh, the inquiry into child sex abuse. Never, ever, ever have I seen the government behave in this way. The reason we have public inquiries is in order to establish the circumstances around which uh, a, a, an event that uh, is of great public importance has taken place. And the idea is to learn the lessons. It is always left to the chair of the inquiry and the inquiry team, which is paid for by us, to assess the evidence in front of it. There will then be a counsel, a lawyer, who acts on behalf of the inquiry and will question key witnesses. This is how it has always been. It is important that these rules are abided by in order that in this country we can have transparency and ensure that mistakes that were made are not repeated. That is the point of a public inquiry. Anyway, my question to you, given you now know what I think about it, is who is right? Is it Baroness Hallett, who is chair of the COVID inquiry, when she says it is up to her to decide which messages, which diary entries are relevant to a public inquiry, or is it down to the government, as you've just heard Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson going on about saying, well, it's down to us. Of course it's down to us, because we always know better. Do they? Really? 